Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Break It Down. We're going to continue mining our way through these rocks. Alright, let's quick save before we go in here and get ourselves into some, some trouble. Ooh, a dead man. My... Okay. Some more mushroom brews, always welcome. Iron gut. That's right. Crossbows weigh like what, three pounds? Or three weight. Alright, no need to waste more resources, we'll just walk all the way around. Is there any northern rocks? No. Hello? Uh okay, I'm gonna put this up and... Actually, no, I'm not. Turn that bad boy off, and I'll probably end up regretting that. Oh well. Let's take him down. Can I hit you with a spear throw? Yeah. Should have used my other one. Oh well. Shoot, now he's gonna come for me. I'm not gonna have a weapon in my hands. Of course, I don't have spear block because I have a spear in my hands. So, uh. I'm hovering right over this guy. There we go. Quick save and continue. Find these giant spiders. Mushroom brew wore off. There we go. Alright, I think that's all the rocks, right? Do a look around real quick. Confirm. Yep, it looks like it. Let's get out of here. I did with this skeleton, right? Yes, yeah, the. Yeah, he had a bunch of TNT. How do I get out of here? Right there. Back to safety. Again, imagine voluntarily wanting to go down that hole. Ugh. Here we go, north. Yeah, let's go north. Or diagonal. We're gonna just keep exploring. I know I have objectives and it might cost me, but...
exploration is important in hopes that we find uh Fences for the camp. Oh, two more XP. We have a look. We're getting a lot of experience pretty quick. This is pretty cool. I mean, that's usually the case whenever you start exploring a new area. I'm sure once we go to the upper under rail and start exploring there, we'll stumble across plenty of experience. Ooh. And a boat tucked away in the reeds. Let's uh, do crowd the uh, water real quick. Okay, hey, my jet ski's in trouble. disappointing. Yeah, I still can't do anything. That was probably rude. Probably dumb. Darn it. All right, well, that's one less guy I got to worry about. Just short action points that I need. If he doesn't kill me, I might be okay. I 
afraid to get closer. I think he's gonna kill me. But I have to close the distance with him. Next turn I can heal. So if I survive this turn, I'll be okay. I'll be definitely pushing it. All right. I hope that he's over there. I don't know where he's at. All right. Yeah. Good. He's in incapacitated. All right, that was agonizingly close. Spirit Potion, instantly restore 80 side points and then an additional 20 side points each turn for three turns. Also puts an unwholesome burden on the mind, reducing all will by three and resolve by 75%. Hmm. Let's use some of this healing salvo. Salve, I have a lot of that as well. Puckerfish. Is that part of the, uh... Nope. Alright, we also need to repair our... Thirty-six out of a hundred. Am I, not, am I not allowed to repair it? Or is this supposed to be electronic? Hmm. Maybe we should just run back to the, uh... The camp real quick. And get this repaired. So I'm not sure how to do it. I thought you could just use a mechanical repair kit, right? Regardless, this jet ski is not as durable as I thought it was. It does well against the leper serpents, but that's, uh, that's it. Crossbow was destroying it. Uh oh, we're in a new area. Should probably quick save before my jet ski gets destroyed on me. No, throughout that darn, there we go. I'm not sure who's I'm supposed to talk to or repair it. I think it's Marcus. Or, uh. uh I get a mixed up mark between Marcus and, is it Tony? It, it's Tony. Tony's the one that repairs it. Marcus is the science guy. Tony's the guide and jet ski repair repairsman.
Really another conversation. I seem to be having another discussion and are unaware of your presence. Listen to the conversation. About this Boggy person. Yeah, yeah. Boggy's one derailed maniac from Junkyard. Heard of it? Junkyard? No. Well, Marky, you need to brush up on your geography. Junkyard is one of the capitals of anarchy here in South Underrail, and they've got a mutant zoo. You shouldn't feed the mutants, though. Anyway, Boggy's one of the scrapper hitmen I once fixed a scrap compactor for. Long and irrelevant story, that is. What I want to tell you about is his wicked sense of humor. The guy looked hardcore all the way. Got this big scar over his gray, lifeless eye, jawline you could cut yourself on. Shoulders wide as a train. To make him even more scary, he had these two Doberman dogs, Bolt and Snap. Stupid names, but it ain't stupid no more when he lets them loose on your ass. Hope this doesn't turn into one of your morbid tales. Shut up, he smiles. So, Bolt and Snap, like their master, are scary as burn in hell. And they're this big, look. He spreads his arms wide and looks between them with a mean face. Yeah, this big man. They'll strip the flesh from your bones faster than them chomper fishes. But only if Boggy gives them the order. They're so well trained you can put a baby in their mouth and go get and go out and get derailed with your woman, knowing that your kids are kids in safe your kids Kids is in safe jaws. Kids in safe jaws. That's an interesting way to put it. That's life, Marky. But these dogs are like machines. Now Boggy taught them a certain command. When he points at someone and says, Chomp on them cobbles, boys, they charge that person, salivating and snapping their jaws like the true harbingers of castration. But it's a trick. They just knock folks to the ground and keep them pinned down while Boggy's dying from laughter. He just orders them back once he's had enough. Marky, I've seen so much death, suffering, and misery during my lifetime, it didn't make a wimp like you sick. The looks of horror I saw in the faces of those poor pipe workers that were the victims of Boggy's perverse sense of humor eclipses everything I've ever witnessed. Some turn pale, some check the pipes in their pants, some try to run, one even fainted. There was also a guy that yelled, but I still need mine. Bwahaha, <laughs> what a zoner. Horrible. How can you possibly laugh at something like that? How can you not laugh? It's a prank, Marky. It's fun. Like, like tasing someone while they're checking the pipes, or pouring laxatives into people's food. <laughs> Would you still find it funny if Boggy did that to you? Ha, huh, he did it. The first time I came to fix his scrap compactor. And? I was the one that yelled, I still need mine. <laughs> Tone. Bwahaha. <laughs> Marky. I've been pranked all my life. I've been brutalized, dominated, and made fun of in every imaginable way. Sure, I got scared when those dogs charged at my hanging twins, I'll be honest. But I found the whole thing so hilarious that I laughed at Boggy afterward. It's what life is all about. Not living in a bubble. And after your skin becomes thick enough, nothing, and I mean nothing, can break through no more. You become hardcore. While you, Marky, you were all traumatized when I tased you in the toilet. <laughs> my leg got lodged in the hole. Well, the next time I do it, you're going to laugh and say, Oh, you cheeky pipe worker. There isn't going to be a next time. There isn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, why does Boggy have a scrap compactor? Eh, hey, there's Brondon. Brondon? May I speak with Tony? Well, I'd like for you to... Well, here. Nope, nope, nope. Weren't you the one that could repair my... Oh, hello. Okay, so a, a Tony of all trades. And a master of about half. Wahaha. <laughs> Ever worked as an animal catcher? Throwing nets or perhaps something a little more lethal nature? Brondon, I live by the Mushroom Cove most of my life. Used to be the second best hopper netter back in my teens. Chased them into their crevices back when I was a slimmer. Who was the first? He turned serious. Tim Cobblejock. But he couldn't catch that one side beetle that sneaked up on him. Tony of all trades. Martial arts? When I was a kid, I taught my best friends Shaggy, Burly, and Slim, the Metro-famous Lad Down Hard, a mysterious and hardcore ancient martial art from East Underrail, which I had developed a few months prior after getting my ass repeatedly zoned out by this kid, Brutal Joe. One mirror-shattering ugly son of a rat. Lad Down Hard ended up being real dominating. Mostly because it involved kicking people in the crotch. Who's brutal now, Joe? Bwahaha. <laughs> you surely aren't into hacking. Sure I am. That time when I worked as a butcher, I used to hack them hopperheads off de all day long. Yeah, you little food-offs. Bwahaha. 
Locksmithing? Rondon, you ain't a junkyard child if you didn't know how to pick the padlock to your neighbor's shack. Yeah. But fast forward a few years later, I'm helping this locksmith design better locks by picking and busting them all day long. You either die a little snotty thief, or you remain un unshot long enough to see yourself become a sellout. But old Toby, he paid me some good coin. He paid me some good coins. So you're both a quad and jet mechanic, right? Yeah, but the greatest compliment I ever got was back when I was working as a quad mechanic. Dirty the whole day, every day, reeking of oil and electrolyte and brew. So I was fixing this dominating E-Series Metro Thunder for this well-known motorhead, and I ever heard him talking to my boss. I would take a can of eels from his hand, but damn, the kids got it. Should have stayed working on quads, but it was them or jets. Yeah. How experienced are you with electronic devices? He speaks with a smug smile. Tell him, mark ya. Ladleman? Wouldn't let him change my Navcom's batteries. I'll give you batteries. Up your ass, you lousy wimp. Just you wait. Quahaha. Uh, how well can you sew? As well as the Invictus dominates. My poor mom had shaky hands and could never get the thread through the eye, so I picked sewing before I picked up brewing. Wahahaha. A few years of experience and I was a decent tailor, fixing stuff for the locals. In fact, ahem, I sewed a couple of dominating dresses for my sister Lily. Yeah. You'd pass for a bouncer. He rubs his bald head. Yeah, I did that a few times. It's hardcore when you're starting out. You shine your boots, your brass, your brass knuckles, and your dome. Thinking you're so hardcore, people are going to be checking their pipes when you come up to them with your best I'm a zone you out face. And then you get run over by the stemmed up, brewed out, 130 kilo ro roid train. After a while, I got tired of washing my own blood from my shirts. But I was once a scare bat for a day. This guy was trying to keep bats away from his mushrooms. I put on that face, and no bat dared come in near. <laughs> Alright. I thought he could. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still disappointed that they don't have a, uh... I don't know who's supposed to repair my stuff. I've already read that. I doesn't want that many. I uh, will sell. We actually need the bandages. All right, so who the heck is supposed to repair my darn my jet ski? I might just have to grab the other one for now. I thought it was I thought Marcus said he could repair a jet ski. Well, I'll try repairing it again, and if I guess if it, I can't, I'll just grab the other one. Try electronic. Try the patching kit. Obviously, that's not going to work. Alright, well, let's quick save. I'll just take this one out then. I'm. <sighs> Screw it. You know what? If I go down, I'm going down with my ship. I'm not going down with some other loser ship.
Maybe if we find the ferryman, he can repair it. So it doesn't give me... Well, shoot. Rose Nautilus, a rare and beautiful shell. One experience for three times. See, now I'm a little bit more nervous about naval combat than I was. I was looking forward to it, but uh, now let's see how much damage I actually take. For range attacks, no less. Right, I'm looking forward to this. No, we're, we're going back. We're getting the other jet ski. I'm not going to keep driving this one until I figure out how to repair it. It's getting a little, little too close for comfort. And comfort is the number one key to success. Because if you're not comfortable, you're not successful, and you can't be successful unless you're comfortable. Something like that.
There we go. It's also a little beat up, but that's okay. So I'm pretty sure it's slower. Is it slower? Small scrap engine. It probably can't fit a... Uh... It's got 50 less power. But it's better than being, um, you know, about to. or being destroyed, I guess. Alright, I'm gonna get back to where I was and we'll call it an episode. So, my priority is the freighter, as far as the, uh, unique jet skis go but really any fast jet ski well I mean because I know the freighter's not fast but since I'm a melee build I think a fast jet ski would benefit me more um, obviously for like firearm builds you'd want the one of the jet skis that has like mounted weapons ideally but since I don't use firearms or guns or any sort of ranged weaponry speed is where it's at so if I ever get the opportunity, I'm gonna buy me a fast jet ski. Actually, before I continue, let's. Oh yeah, throughout this area. All right, in the next one we'll continue north and. See just how far it goes. Making a lot of progress. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.